Hello folks and welcome to another screencast on the EP and this particular screencast is going to be discussing the tactics element in the first half of the EP assessment. This element runs in the same principal way as skills and fitness components in that what the exam board are asking you to do is to watch the clip you've been shown very very carefully and do the following steps. You need to identify a tactic or a tactical element that is very clear within the video that you've seen. Once you've identified one that you want to discuss, you're then going to explain in a bit of detail as to what you saw in terms of why you've identified that, I guess, and then briefly explain why was that successful or unsuccessful for the performer and why was that successful or unsuccessful for the team. So they both must be covered there, the performer and the team. And finally, you also need to apply some element of theory to what has been seen. And in essence, what you need to do when you're watching your clip is within the time limit allowed, you need to identify as many strengths or as many weaknesses of the tactical elements that you can spot. Now, clearly the time permitted dictates how many tactical elements you will be able to complete. And so you need to monitor that when, when the stopwatch is presented to you. But essentially, you'll need to gather information for the tactical element in some way, shape or form for your assessment. If you miss it out completely, you will lose marks. So what do we mean by this and what would be an example of this? So if I watched a football clip, I might identify and explain what's going on first. Okay. So you might say one strength of the performer that I saw on the clip was their man marking at set pieces in the clip that I had observed. For example, they might have been really tightly connected to a, a particular player and you might name that player in terms of the shirt number. That's also quite useful. We can then go on. The performer was physically close to the player they were marking and therefore didn't allow much distance to them when marking the set player. They were very focused on trapping the, tracking the opponent's movements. So this player is very successful at shadowing uh, the, mar the marked player and preventing them from gaining opportunities. So that's our explanation, that's our identifying explanation. What's going on? What are you seeing in the clip? We then got to think about the success. So we've got to have something about success in these elements. This was successful for the performer as it didn't allow the opposing player space or time to gain any sort of advantage from the set pieces. It also didn't allow the opposing player time to accelerate or make effective decisions when the performer was defending. So how was that tight bit of marking effective in that strategy? Well, it's it's closing a space. It's not allowing to make the, the player to make decision-making processes. Once we've done the how was it successful for the performer, we need to do success rates for the team. This was successful for the team as it meant the team had an effective man marking strategy which they could employ at each set piece and this would limit the attacking opportunities for the opposing team. Now it's very easy to fall into a trap with for the team element in terms of success, of just saying, oh, this prevented a goal, or this prevented something from happening. Just a basic statement. You need to make sure you have a number of elements that what you're saying in terms of the individual performance and the tactic you pick relates to the team in a different way. So you, yes, you might say this prevents a goal scoring opportunity for one element of, of one of the tactics you talk about. But, for, but then once you've mentioned that, don't repeat that again. Don't keep repeating yourself. OK, so that's a cautionary mark there. Now, once we've done the successful uh, performance, successful team elements, we then go add some theory towards it. So why was it a success in terms of any theory we've done across the two years of A-level PE? So we could have something like this. They may have learned to employ this strategy effectively through social learning theory. The performer may have observed other members of the team, man marking very closely, decided to copy that skill. This may then have been reinforced by two ways. One, if the performer then prevents the attacking player from gaining an advantage, 
it's obviously been a success, so he's probably going to repeat that again. Or if the coach on the sidelines are given positive reinforcement when the performer defended really well or man marked really well, that will then be repeated again and therefore that strategy could be used effectively. All right. So I've tied that into some skill acquisition learning to why that, that tactical strategy is effective. What you now need to do is think of common tactical strategies that occur within your observed sport. So you can sort of think about those. You might not see them all, but you can sort of gain an idea of those. All common weakness areas of tactical areas and therefore apply strengths and weaknesses accordingly. All right, if you need any more help with the EP or any element of A-Level PE, head to the I Speak PE channel on YouTube. And thanks again for watching.